Number 14. A sandwich board advertising sign is constructed as shown in figure 9.34. The sign's mass is 8 kilograms. Letter A. Calculate the tension in the chain, assuming no friction between the legs and the sidewalk. All right. So here's our picture. And we have uh, four forces in the problem, uh, but only three are going to be important in terms of producing torques. So let's make, uh, first we got to find our axis of rotation. Now you could choose either the hinge or the floor. I'm going to choose the hinge. Okay, I'm going to assume that this is my axis. Now if that's the axis, any forces acting on the hinge are, or produce zero torques. Because the lever arm is exactly at the axis and therefore R is zero. So there's no torque. So there's now three forces that will be important in terms of producing torques. So let's detail them. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to describe. Oops, one second. I erased that S there. I'm going to describe uh, this side of the board. Okay, you can choose either side. You could even look at both. I think um, there's a couple of ways to solve this. I mean, you can reference chapter four. I think it's number twenty nine. Uh, I did, and I showed two alternative methods to calculate, what was it, the force, I think, uh, or the tensional force in a cable, something like that, if I remember correctly. And I showed two alternative methods. You can use either method here. I mean, there's a lot of ways to solve these things, so you should be familiar with a bunch of them. Now, I'm only going to look at one side, though. So uh, let's first describe the uh, tensional force in the of the chain. So in reference to this particular side of the board, that tension force will be pointing to the right. Okay, let's label that F1. Then as we move down the board, the next force that's acting on it is the weight. Right? And that weight will be pointing directly down. Okay, I'll draw it all the way down. So that weight's gonna be pointing directly down. We'll call that F2. And then there's a third force, the normal force that is pointing directly up. And let's label that uh, F3. All right. So now uh, we have three forces. And if we had to think about this, we could try and solve for the tensional force by thinking about, you know, the sum of the four. This board is in equilibrium. Therefore, the sum of the forces should equal zero. But the problem is we're missing a key component. These X components cancel uh, between those two. Well, actually, I mean, there's no X components there, right? <laughs> so there's zero X. And here's an X component, but you know the additional then X component would be the force of the hinge here, in the, and, and we don't know that at all. So we basically have two unknowns, so we can't look at the problem that way. Instead, we have to look at it in terms of the sum of the torques equaling zero. Okay, so let's write that down. So the sum of the torques will equal zero. How many torques are there? Well, there's gonna be three. I have an axis, and there are three forces acting at three different locations along that particular rigid bar. So therefore, I can call it T1 plus T2 plus T3 will equal zero. Let's check the signs. I'm going to call the uh, tension that's produced by force 1, T1, the tension that's produced by force 2, T2, and the tension that's produced by force 3, T3. Uh, so now, the according to, or viewing force 1, if I were to think about this axis, this would rotate the bar counterclockwise, and therefore this force would produce a positive torque. So that's good. That value is positive. For torque 2, torque 2 is produced by this particular force. And if you notice, if that force is applied, it's going to rotate the bar in the counterclockwise direction as well. Therefore, that's positive. And then we have force 3, the normal force. If that force is applied, it would be rotating that bar in the clockwise direction. Therefore, this torque will be negative. So let's just adjust that sign. Okay, so we plug in the negative. Now, we know we have to solve for force one, and we know force one is tied into this T1, so why don't we just solve this thing for T1 right now? Okay, so that would be T1 is equal to T3 minus T2. All right, easy enough. Now let's start introducing um, other variables in place of the torque so we can finally get down to the forces. So remember that, you know, I have two equations here. If I were to take this, you know, value, or I should say this, and substitute it on into that equation, I would have then the torque is equal to the perpendicular lever arm multiplied by the applied force. Now I think for this particular problem, this would be easier to look at in my opinion. I would like to look at it more from a geometric perspective. All right. So that being the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute now 
the perpendicular, all of these R's will represent perpendicular values. I'm not gonna keep writing that in here, okay? I'm So just note that ahead of time, all right? So this will be the perpendicular lever arm of force uh, one multiplied by force one is equal to the perpendicular lever arm of force three multiplied by force three minus the perpendicular lever arm of force two multiplied by force two. Okay, I gotta solve for force one, divide out R1, right? So here's F1, I'm gonna be equal to now R3, F3, minus R2, F2, all over R1. Here's the formula, okay, this is it. Now let's go about and figure out the variables. Now remember, all those R's represent perpendicular components. So let's first focus on R3. So R3 will correlate with F3 in my picture, it's up here. What I'm gonna do actually is let me just draw a simplified picture. All right, so we'll draw a little triangle, but it has to be a right triangle. Come on, we can do it. There we go. All right, so that particular force of three is found here. It's pointing upwards, right? So this is F3. Now remember, the axis of rotation is here, okay? This is the axis. And the definition of the perpendicular lever arm is the distance that is perpendicular to the line of action of the force. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to dot the line of action for this force. And now what I wanna do is I wanna find the perpendicular distance between this line of action and the axis. Well, how could I represent that? Well, I could simply represent that by that arrow. Oh, well, not arrow, that line. Okay, so let's call this our, uh, you know, R. And specifically, this is R3. Now, how do I find R3? Well, if you notice, this thing kind of creates a nice little square. Well, I shouldn't say square, rectangle. It's not a square, it's a rectangle, right? But it creates a nice four-sided figure that will have four 90-degree angles. Okay, now that being the case, do we know anything about any of the sides in this rectangle? Well, we do, right? What's the height? Remember, the original picture here, here's the, here's the board right for half of the sandwich board there. Here's the board part, okay? So what's the height of the board? Well, according to the picture, the height of the board was 1.3 meters. So we know this side, 1.3 meters. And what's the bottom part? Well, the bottom part, the whole board from one end to the other end was 1.1 meters, but I cut it in half, right? So I know this particular distance to be 1.10 over two. Does that make sense? So now if I'm asking myself, well, what is R3? And I recognize that I have a rectangle here. I know that this particular side has to be equivalent to this side. So I actually know my perpendicular lever arm here, R3. Well, that's wonderful. So R3 is exactly this value. Okay, so let's start plugging that in. So let's, F1 will now equal R3, which was 1.10 over two, then multiplied now by the force of three. Well, now let's think about it. So what's the total, first let's start with what's the total mass of the entire board? The entire mass is eight kilograms. Okay, so that means this piece and this piece was eight kilograms. Well, I'm only talking about half the board, so what's the total weight of this side? Well, well, I should say total mass first. Well, the total mass was simply eight over two, right? So the total mass of half the board, right, was just the eight, I'll write it over here, eight over two. That's the total mass of the left side, let's say. So that's gonna be four kilograms. And then what's its weight? We'll simply multiply that by 9.8, right? So take four, multiply that by 9.8, we get a value of 39.2. So 39.2, and that's in terms of Newtons. Now that's the weight, but that weight, that force vector there is exactly equal to, but opposite in direction of the normal force here that I labeled F3. So this is the force of F3, okay? Now don't worry about signs here because we already took the signs into account talking about the torque. So you always plug in all the positive values now, regardless of if it's positive pointing or negatively pointing, okay? If we were doing some of the forces, then we'd have to take those uh, up and down into account. But these are the torques and I took the uh, counterclockwise and clockwise directions in, uh, in account for the signs. So, uh, R3 uh, was exactly what we said, and now F3 is what I just found, 39.2, minus now, what's R2? All right, so let's look at now R2. So what I'm gonna do is simplify this picture. Let's erase uh, 
Let's get some room here. So let's erase this. Now I'm going to detail R2. All right, so here's my triangle again. Where is F2? Because R2 will correlate with F2. And that doesn't really look like a right triangle. Let me try that one more time. That looks a little better. So the R2 will correlate with F2, which is halfway right up the board. So now that's a, that's a force pointing uh, down, correct? Okay. And here's my axis of rotation. Now remember, I'm going to draw a dotted line that is, represents the line of action. That dotted line is becoming terrible at the bottom. Okay. Um, that line of action now is going to uh, represent the line of action of the force. And now what I need to do is I need to find the perpendicular distance between this line of action and the axis. How can I represent that? I can simply represent that as this component, right? So let's call that R2. Now, how do I find R2? Well, what do I know about these things inside of the triangle? What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to outline a rectangle just like I did before. Okay, so let's actually close this on up here and then here. What do we notice or do we know anything about any of those four sides? Well, sure, we know two of those sides. We know this one, right? What would that be? Remember, the center of gravity is acting at the center of this particular board, which has to be halfway up the total height. So I actually know that this height here will represent or will be, could be found by taking 1.30 and dividing it by 2. Okay, how about now this particular distance? Well, again, I know that this point is located halfway along the board. And therefore, if I knew, if I know that this particular length, right, was going to be half of the 1.1 that we found before, then I know that this length will be a quarter, right, of the 1.1. So let me label that. So this is now going to be 1.1 over 4. Well, guess what? We created a rectangle, right? So this particular side has to be equivalent to R2. So we know what R2 is. All right, so let's plug that in. So R2 is 1.10 over 4. Okay, multiplied now by F2. So remember, F2 was the force here. Don't worry about the sign. We know it's pointing down, but I already talked about that. Plug in the positive value. So the force is going to be equal to the weight we calculated over here, right? It's essentially half of the total weight. So plug that value in, 39.2. Great, all right. And then, last but not least, we got to find now the perpendicular lever arm of F1, essentially. So, one more time. Let's erase the picture. Let's do a new one. As you can see, I think this might be easier than looking at it from the pure mathematical perspective. At least that's my opinion. Um, so here, let's take a look at now this particular force, right? This is the tensional force, and that's pointing in that direction. So here I call this F1. Again, here's my axis of rotation. Now, remember, the important uh, lever arm is the perpendicular one. So I have to dot my line of action that is going to run right through that f applied force. And now what I want to think about is what is the perpendicular distance from that line of action to the axis? Wait a minute, it's just this, right? It's just this straight line. What is that value? Oh my goodness, look what they gave me in the problem, 0 0.5. So this thing is 0 0.5 meters. And that is R1. I mean, that's what it is. It's all. That's all. So we can just now plug that in. So 0 0.5 meters. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We can now calculate. So let's do it. I mean, you can simplify the math here too if you wanted, but why, why bother? So, you know, meaning like combine the terms in the numerator, but let's just calculate. So 1.1 divided by 2 times 39.2 uh, minus 1.1 divided by 4 times 39.2. And then take that and divide that by now 0.5. And there we go. We get now the force being equal to 21.5 six newtons okay so that's f1 and that is the tension voila all right so now let's take a look at uh, letter b so letter b now says what force is exerted by each side of the hinge okay so now let me just erase this picture so this was all for letter a 
Okay, this was all for letter A. And let me plug in now letter B here. So letter B now, what is the force exerted by each side of the hinge? All right. Well, now what we can, how we can think about this is we can think about now the, some of the forces, okay, have to balance. So in that particular case, right, and why do they have to balance? Well, this whole thing is in equilibrium, right? There's no motion. So I know that the, right, by definition, I know that some of the forces have to equal zero. Now, more specifically, I know that the sum of the forces in the x direction have to equal zero, as well as the y direction. Now, what am I concerned about? Well, I already know that these two forces were equal to one another in the y direction, right? So I, I know that that can't be the forces on the hinge there. I know then that the forces in the x direction have to balance. Now, if you notice, in terms of my picture, there is a horizontal right-handed force here, right, pointing to the right. And in order for the forces to balance, there has to be a force that opposes that, right? So in other words, I can write something like this. So the sum of the force in the x direction is equal to zero. So that means F1 has to, well, when added to, right, let's call it, um, let's call it F at the hinge, because that's the only force that's missing, right? This hinge is probably applying some force. I mean, I'm giving you the answer basically already. Uh, but that has to equal zero. So what do we notice? That the force of the hinge has to equal the opposite uh, direction, but equal in magnitude to F1. So what is the force exerted by the hinge here for the left-handed side of the board? It would be negative 21.6 newtons. But now that's not necessarily, that's the answer. But, you know, they're saying what force is, exer is exerted by each side of the hinge. So this is the force exerted by one side. Now I know it's negative, but you would probably answer this in the positive, just the way the question is being asked, okay? Because they're concerned about each side. So basically for this left-handed board, the hinge is producing a force that way. For this right-handed board, then the hinge is producing a force that way, okay? So they want to know exerted by each side, so let's just give the magnitude of 21.6 newtons. And that takes care of that, ladies and gentlemen. So. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this video helped. And if it did, please help us out by uh, subscribing. That would be awesome. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next question. Have a great day.